All right, this is going to be Asteroid Destroyer Section 3. This should also be another very short one. All we're going to do on this one is we're going to add a health system into our game so that we lose health instead of just getting destroyed immediately. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to put a health bar on the screen. So if you're using the preloaded game, it should already be in here. So what we're going to do is we are going to put the health bar down. And we'll just put that like down in the corner. And then we have something called a health bar border that we're going to take. And we're going to put that down here as well. Now, I want to just double check something really quick here. Okay. Yeah, so that should be good. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to lay that border right on top like that. Um, I think in the presentation, they give you specific coordinates. But as long as you just eyeball it and kind of just get it to look nice like that, that should be fine. And just somewhere in the lower left. It doesn't have to be in a particular spot. Whatever you think looks good for that. Okay. Then what we need to do in order to give our ship actual health, we have to give him a variable to track it. So we're going to click on the spaceship and we're going to give him an instance variable. Now an instance variable, it's like a global variable, like it's, an, it's a variable, it's a number that we can track and use, right? But an instance variable means it just belongs to that instance of that object. So it's better for tracking individual values. So for example, if I had like five spaceships on here and they all shared health, if we made health a global variable, if one lost health, they would all lose health, right? But by making it an instance variable, this one has its own health value and another spaceship would have its own health and they would all act independently. Okay, so that's when you want to use instance variables. Um, so I'm going to add an instance variable and make sure the spaceship is highlighted. Um, add new instance variable. We're going to call it health. Whoops. And we're going to make it 128 to start. Okay, so my ship is going to have 128 health. Now, right now, this is just a number stored for the ship. It doesn't actually do anything yet until we add some events. Okay, so <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to go to our event sheet here, and we're going to go to the event where the asteroid hits the player. So I think that is in set and spaceship handling yep so spaceship on collision with asteroid right so instead of just destroying the spaceship we are going to take health damage instead so i'm going to delete that event out i just clicked it and pressed delete and then i'm going to add an action there and i'm going to do spaceship and i'm going to type in subtract from and then i'm going to choose health and we are going to subtract 10. okay so now instead of getting destroyed, the spaceship is just going to lose 10 health, okay? Then what we're going to do is we are going to make it so that this health bar will actually track, like be aligned with the player's health instance variable. So in order to do that, we're going to do an event called an every tick. So in the start event group, we're going to add an event there, and it's going to be system, and it's every tick. Every tick means it's just constantly going to trigger. So it's going to do it as much as it can. So when you're trying to make a text value track to a variable or you want something to track to a variable, you typically do it as an every tick because you always want it to be updating. Okay. So every tick, we're going to add an action for the health bar and we're going to do something called set width. Okay. So we're going to set the width of it. And we're going to set the width to match whatever the spaceship's health is. So to get that variable, we have to type in spaceship and then double click on the suggested word here. Then you're going to do dot and then start typing in health. And it should pop up there. Okay, so every tick, the health bar's width is going to match the spaceship dot health. Okay, now it's going to work, but there's going to be some issues that we'll fix here in a second. So I'm going to click play. So you can see the health bars down there. Press enter to start. Okay. So when I get hit, I said subtract 10 from health, which should also subtract 10 from the uh, width of the health bar. So you can see the health bar just went down a teeny bit over here. Okay. Press enter again. And it's subtracting. Now you're noticing that it's kind of subtracting inward, which isn't really what we want, right? We don't want it going in like that. We want it to go from like right to left to show that our health is getting lower. So we're going to do one quick little thing to fix that. So on the health bar here, 
um, whoops, so I might have to move this actual thing out of the way, but you want to double click on this actual health bar here, okay? Um, now, there could be a couple of ways that you did this. If you are using the, if you started with the sample file with all the stuff preloaded, this should be a sprite and you're going to do what I'm going to do next here. But if you followed my um, demo videos, and I think I, I'm going to have them in the bonus area, but I had two demo videos that show you how to upload all the assets yourself if you wanted to do that. And there, I think I directed you to make this a tiled background. If you made this a tiled background, you won't actually see the option for an origin here. Um, then you should already be good to go. You shouldn't have to do anything. But if yours is a sprite like this, which most of you will probably have, you want to click on this little origin button down here. And basically to stop it from like decreasing inwards, we're going to put the origin on the far left. So it doesn't decrease because it's decreasing towards the origin. That's why it's coming in on both sides. So we're going to move the origin to the left. So it'll decrease from right to left. So with this origin button highlighted, you should see an image point window here. Just right click on the word origin and we're going to quick assign it to the left. And that's going to put the origin to the far left. If you do that, that's going to fix our problem. Now, when you do it, it's going to shift a little bit. So if you had your health bar over it, you're going to have to readjust it. So I'm just going to put this back where I want it. Put the um, border back over the top where I want it. Um, you can, if it's highlighted, you can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge it and like get it right where you want it. Okay. So now if I run it and I take 10 health, it should only go from left to right. Or right to left, I should say. The IE. So you can see it went down there just from the one side. And then it should just continue to decrease from that one side. So that's basically it for section three. Very quick section, but we just got that main health part set up. One thing to note is that if my health goes below zero, I do not die yet. We'll program that in later. What's going to happen is, is the health bar is just going to keep decreasing, and then it's actually going to go out and extend off the screen. So if yours does that and you think you did something wrong, you didn't. We just haven't programmed it to die when we hit zero life yet. All right, so that'll be it for section three.